Thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming out today. It's a real packed room, so thank you. Um, I want to especially thank the elected officials who are here. There's too many of them to mention by name, so thank you for coming today. And also, um, I saw from the city council, Councilman Larry Hug, Councilman John Girl, and Councilman Pat Mudra, so thank you for coming. Um, the city of Joliet essentially is a city in transit. In 1990, the population of Joliet was 78,000 people. Today, 26 years later, the population of Joliet is 147,000 people. <clears throat> In 1990, Joliet was 31 square miles. Today, 26 years later, it's 63 square miles. So it, it's uh, fair to say that the city of Joliet has literally, literally doubled in the last quarter century. Um, with that, well, what, what spurred that economic boom in Joliet or, or, or the, the growth of Joliet? I think the obvious reasons are the good economy nationwide, the relatively cheap land in the Chicagoland area, but specifically the Joliet, the two riverboats that came into our community and put in over $700 million of tax revenue into Joliet coffers over the, the period since they've been here. So the $700 million that's coming to Joliet, some very good things have happened. Uh, specifically, we were able to basically to operate debt-free for a long time. Unlike some surrounding communities around Joliet, we have very little debt. Um, we had built up a reserve fund of up to $60 million. So Joliet financially has done well. In 2008, with the economic hit that everyone took across the country, including here in Joliet, um, we suffered a little bit. Our reserve fund currently, after the purchase of Evergreen Terrace this year, is at $33 million. Um, in the heydays of the riverboats, when they were flourishing, Joliet received a, a high number of $36 million in revenue for one single year. In 2015, Joliet received $18 million. So our river, our river casino revenue has literally been cut in half. I think a challenge for me and for this current city council going forward is to be how we're going to manage this city. We know that riverboat revenues are not going to go back to the levels they were before. One thing that we learned in 2015, um, when the state of Illinois withheld the gaming tax from Joliet, I was working with the mayors of Aurora and Elgin to uh, petition Springfield to have them to release the funds that were due our city, which they have done. Um, in Aurora and in Elgin, the cities have been disciplined. The casino revenue that they get in those towns do not, does not go in their operating budget. That revenue is strictly spent on capital expenses, including police cars, ambulances, snow plows. Unfortunately, in Joliet, we haven't follow, followed that model. The $18 million that we got in 2015 goes directly in our operating budget. We're living on the casino money, at least partly in the casino money. So again, I think it's a challenge moving forward a, to, re to rebuild our reserve funds, to um, start weaning the city off of the, the casino money so it's not based on our operating or used for operating expenses, and then of course to maintain the high levels of service that we provide our residents. Um, there is some good economic news though, the report. A year ago, going into 2015, the city council passed a budget which um, estimated $8.6 million needed to be taken out of reserves. We were upside down $8.6 million. At the end of 2015, I'm happy to report that Joliet never went in the reserves. In, in essence, we added $1.7 million to our reserve fund. So make no mistake, the city of Joliet was run financially sound in 2015. And I think Jim Hock and staff deserves credit along with the city council for doing that. Um, this year's budget was similar to what we passed a year ago. We are estimating a $6.8 million deficit for 2016. So again, I think another challenge for myself and the council in this upcoming year is to manage the city as effectively as we did in 2015, not to go into reserves, but, but instead to add to our reserves moving forward. So I think the obvious question is, how did we do this in 2015? How did we project an $8.6 million deficit and add $1.7 million savings? Um, I'm going to throw some numbers at you, and I, I think the answer are, A, we, we budgeted correctly, conservatively and correctly, but number two, I think the big reason is the economic development that happened in Joliet in 2015. Um, in 2015, our new housing increased by 90% from where it was in 2014. Commercial building permits increased by 205% in 2015 as opposed to 2014. Industrial building permits were up 554% in 2015. 
Overall, the city of Joliet issued 7,073 new building permits, which was a 24% increase from where we were in 2014. I think it's great news for the city, and I think the projections are that, that uh, the new growth is going to continue in Joliet. When you look at our city and look where the growth is happening, I think the obvious point that people would look at is to the south of our city with the intermodals, with Center Point and the new uh, business and, and industry that's developing down there, and it is significant. Um, I have a list of who came into that area last year in 2015. Arc Logistics moved into Joliet. They built a crude oil uh, pipeline and a crude oil unloading terminal, a four-mile pipeline. Um, Arc Logistics is built to handle and process 85,000 barrels of oil a day through that terminal. And they also built a storage facility of 300,000 barrels. IKEA made a commitment to Joliet. They're moving in on, on Route 53 and Larraway, a 72-acre development. Conway Freight um, built a 41,000 square foot facility. It houses 80 docks, and Conway Freight can move 1.6 million pounds of freight per day. They're in Joliet. They came in 2015. Saddle Creek Logistics 2015 signed a lease for 1.1 1. 1 million foot warehouse in Joliet. Cadence Premier Logistics, um, they moved to Joliet from Alsip, Illinois. They purchased 44 acres. They're currently building a 121,000 square foot building. Um, along with logistics, Cadence will have a light manufacturing component. And I think most importantly, and, and what we really want to see trend in Joliet, they also are moving their corporate headquarters to that site. I think it's great news what Cadence is doing. <laughs> International Transload Logistics, they're moving to Joliet from Elwood. They leased a 303,000 square foot facility. The Long Company is moving from Shanahan to Joliet. They lease in a 25-acre site. Whirlpool committed to a 752,000 square foot lease here in Joliet in 2015. Whirlpool is going to invest $21 million of private money in Joliet. And of course, the big one, I think everyone Amazon. Amazon purchased a 362-acre facility. They currently have built a 500,000 500, square foot, foot building. They're open in Joliet. This all happened last year in 2015. What this represents literally is millions of dollars of private money which has been invested in our city in the last 12 months. Millions of dollars in construction jobs um, going to the to work of a new construction being done in Joliet. And it represents jobs which have come to Joliet in the last 12 months. I think it's great news for the city. And again, um, if, if you consider that Center Point is approximately only 60% built out, there's more coming. So I, I certainly think the 2016, we're going to continue to see that trend happening to our south. Along with the intermodal area, there's new construction and new development on the riverfront, uh, most notably Illinois, Michigan, and oil. Moved to Joliet in 2015. They're still under construction. I can say they've already been in my office talking about something in their operation. Um, the mall continues to thrive, the Lewis Joliet Mall. We had uh, Ross Dress for Less, DSW Shoes, Dick's Sporting Goods all come into that area. And I would like to really point out uh, the Lewis Joliet Mall is still over 95% occupied, which is bucking the trends of what's happening nationwide. With the rise of e-commerce and internet shopping, most malls are struggling. You aren't seeing new malls opening, and existing ones are struggling. Luckily, our mall in Joliet isn't doing, it isn't, it hasn't followed that trend. They're doing very well. Along with the economic development, talked about, I think there's a number of accomplishments that the city uh, achieved in 2015 which need to be uh, noted. Number one would be the courthouse. Um, when I spoke in front of the chamber over the summer, I identified the courthouse as being one of the projects that I thought as, as mayor needed to be addressed right away. The idea of the courthouse being built in downtown Joliet had been on the table for a long time um, and basically been kicked around. It became clear to me that, that the Will County Board was going to move forward on this project, and I thought it was imperative, and I know the City Council agreed, that that courthouse be built in downtown Joliet and not on a green site somewhere else in the county. So I got together with Jim Hock, the City Manager. I brought John Gerlin, the County Liaison on the City Council, and we went with Larry Walsh and Reagan Freitag and Mike Frisalone and member, Democratic and Republic members of the Will County Board and their staffs. We sat in a room several nights and we got a deal done. And I'm happy to say that the, that the courthouse is going to stay in downtown Joliet. Um, I do thank our county um, partners for working with the city on this. And I think this is a great example of government working. I also, I always forget the chief judge changed that. So he was part of the process too. I also thank the chief judge. 
But this is an example of different levels of government working to do what's best for the people. I think it's a great a, a accomplishment that we did in 2015, and I look forward to the partnership moving forward. Um, the Evergreen Tears lawsuit was won by the city of Joliet in 2015. I think most people are familiar with the issue. It was a 10-year legal battle. Um, the trial was done in 2015. The federal judge ruled in the city's favor. The matter is still under um, review. It was appealed by the owners of the property. The appeal should be done shortly, and I believe we're going to get good news moving forward. But I think putting the litigation for Evergreen Terrace behind us was a major step in moving forward uh, for, for the city. We've really been hamstrung by that um, litigation for some time. Um, I will say that um, in the fall, I accompanied Larry Walsh in the Chamber of Commerce to Washington, D.C. I met with our federal elected officials. One of the issues we talked about was Evergreen Terrace. I also had a very candid meeting with, with um, a number of people from the Housing and Urban, and Urban about what we see for the future of that property. So again, I think that was a very positive accomplishment for the city in 2015. A couple other accomplishments. Uh, the budget that was just passed in December established for the first time in the history of the city an inspector general position. Um, the city of Joliet has hired Chris Regis. He was a former Joliet police officer and also a state's attorney. He worked with Mr. Glasgow's office. He's one of the top prosecutors in Will County. He's now a member of the city of Joliet. I think this is a great accomplishment for our city. This is going to give the citizens of Joliet oversight over something that hasn't existed before. I know myself, elected official, and other elected officials talk about transparency. This is transparency at work. I think this position is going to save tax dollars. It's going to cost, cut inefficiency, cut waste, and cut fraud in city government. I think it was a big accomplishment. I compliment the city council for voting this position in and helping me get this accomplished. Um, we also, in the same budget, passed a position for next. We hired Steve Jones, who's here today. Um, to, to take the role of economic development director and contribute to Joliet. Now, it's somewhat staggering to think that this is the first history we've had a true economic development director. I talked earlier about the expansion of the city, how much it grew. I think we can look at what happened on the far west side of Joliet with subdivision after subdivision after subdivision stretching all the way to Kendall County and say that there probably wasn't a solid development plan. We're going to rectify that. And I, I Steve on board, I, I'm very confident that we are going to start seeing commercial and retail on the far west side. I know Steve is working hand in hand with uh, the city center partnership in developing downtown. Um, I also think Councilman Larry Hugg, who is the chairman of the Econ Economic Development Committee, has been calling for years about seeing an economic development plan, a three or five or a ten year plan. I think that's something that we're going to develop in 2016. But again, this, creating this position and bringing this person in the city of Joliet is a big accomplishment for the city. And again, thank you to the council. Um, as far as 2016, projections for 2016, there's a number of things I think um, I, I feel reasonably confident in saying are going to happen inside the city of Joliet. Number one, I believe you're going to see continued economic development. I talked about what's happening to the south. It's been in the paper about the economic development downtown. Um, I do think that you're going to see more intermodal companies come into the south. I also think there's going to be economic development, significant economic development in other areas of the city. I could say that I've signed more than one non-disclosure agreement, so obviously I'm not going to talk about that today. But I do think there's going to be big announcements coming in 2016 for economic development in Joliet. One thing I, would, um, I have spoken with our city staff about and I would encourage moving forward, when companies approach Joliet looking to locate in Joliet, it's not uncommon, it's not just Joliet, it'd be any municipality, that they're seeking incentives to move into Joliet. And Joliet, it's good business. We offer economic incentives to have a company located in Joliet. One thing I'd like to see in these negotiations moving forward is I would like to see economic incentives at least partially tied to the number of Joliet residents that these businesses are willing to hire. Joliet is booming, and it needs to be spread across our community, um, not simply in one geographical location, but that the jobs that are coming in are going to be filled, or, or the local people are going to have access to those jobs. Um, in that same light, I would like to compliment Joliet Junior College. I know Dr. Daniels is here today. 
The junior college, I think very astutely, um, has created a program regarding logistics training. And, and um, it's, I, I wouldn't call it a degree in logistics, but I think it's a 30-hour program. They've approached my office, and they want to work with my office, and they will work with my office um, in, in dealing with Centerpoint and the logistic companies that are coming to Joliet. What the junior college is proposing is not training in warehousing jobs, those exist, but in careers in logistics, careers that pay fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year. Um, these are real jobs, real programs, and they're coming to our community. So I compliment the junior college, and I think we're going to see movement in 2016 making this known to, the, to our young people in Joliet that there are careers available that didn't exist five or ten years ago, at least not in this area. They're there. These are solid careers that you could raise a family on. You could buy a house and pay a mortgage on these careers. And again, I compliment the junior college. I look forward to working with you in the next year to firmly establish it and to get our young people the opportunities for what's happening to the south of our city. Um, I also have spoken at length about the need for infrastructure improvements regarding the south. Um, I believe you're going to see more movement on that in 2016. I've spoken quite a bit about proposed toll bridge in the Hobart Road area going directly into center point. We've also talked about expanding I-80 and I-55. I do believe in the next year you're going to hear announcements from my office and from other branches of government, whether it be the, the county board or the state government, about those things beginning to happen in the Joliet, in Joliet, in the Joliet area. I think in 2016 you're going to see a continued push to uh, revitalize the downtown area. I spoke about the efforts with the City Center Partnership. Um, I think one thing, number one on my list for downtown, and I think the City Council agrees, is to reassemble the same team I did, I put together to get the courthouse deal done, and meet with the county board, and once and for all, open up Chicago Street um, to have a flow through in and out of downtown Joliet. Every plan that we've commissioned for downtown has spoken of the need to do that. I think there's a good understanding on the council, and I think other layers of government agree that that is vital to open up downtown Joliet. And I do believe in 2016 you're going to see that happen. Um, also downtown, College of St. Francis has relocated and opened a campus into downtown Joliet. Joliet Junior College is also looking to do the same. I, the City Council has adopted the Camaro plan. It's uh, money for that plan was budgeted in the 2016 budget. I think you're going to see the Camaro's plan begin to be implemented in 2016. Finally, the multimodal project, um, which has been stalled for some time, the new train station, the high-speed rail that was begun. I think as many of you know, the state of Illinois was withholding money that had been uh, that had been promised to Joliet, spe specifically $31 million. Um, we received word a week ago that the state is going to honor their promise. I believe we're going to get a uh, commitment at the end of the month. And in 2016, we will see that project uh, begin again, and the construction will continue in downtown Joliet. Um, internally, in 2016, all five of our working units, all five of our, our bargaining unions, uh, are without a contract. Their contracts expired at the end of this year. I could say that currently the city is in negotiation with all five of those unions. I believe you're going to hear an announcement, relatively short order, of long-term contracts that are signed by the unions that are both fair to our hard-working employees and fair to the people of Joliet. I think putting those labor issues behind us in 2016 would be good, positive for Joliet. Um, there's another variety of small issues I'd like to see in 2016 and, and certainly going to push forward as well as working with the city council. Number one, we talked a week ago at a baseball committee meeting about all-purpose turf at Silver Cross Field. It's not a new idea. It's been talked about for years. I think we all recognize the limitations of Silver Cross Field right now. Um, it's a $25 million ballpark that is going to have infrastructure improvements needed in the future um, that sits open for many months a year, unused. It's used in the summertime, but even then the use is limited because of the grass. You can't burn out the field. The all-purpose turf would be an investment in that field, but I believe it's an investment that's good for Joliet taxpayers in the city of Joliet. As soon as that turf goes in, the value of that stadium is increased. Um, you will see increased revenues as a stadium can be used for football, for youth baseball, not just for professional baseball, for soccer, for lacrosse, for boxing, for concerts. Our city manager, who's from Michigan, even had the idea of uh, opening a nice rink in the wintertime. So it's like today, people can be skating in, in the stadium. I think it's something that needs to be um, not just looked at by the council, but acted upon. Again, th this issue's been kicked around for a long time. I think in 2016, the city council is going to move forward on that. 
In 2016, expect to see the Joliet police ramp up truck enforcement for overweight trucks that are riding through our city. I talked about the development to the south. It's terrific, the jobs and the, and the revenue it's bringing to Joliet. Unfortunately, we also know we have a lot of trucks that aren't following the law that are tearing up our streets, riding on our streets. I think Will County has done an excellent job. The Will County Sheriff's has shown the revenue that could be raised in enforcing the, the, the truck ordinances. We recently passed a new ordinance about overweight trucks, and you're going to see that enforced much more diligently by the Joliet Police. Um, we've revamped the law department in the city of Joliet. And in 2016, I expect to see our law department um, greatly increase the amount of local prosecutions that are being done. Um, within Joliet. You see this in many surrounding communities, Bolingbrook, Naperville, uh, New Lenox, Frankfurt, where traffic offenses, petty offenses, and low-level misdemeanor offenses are prosecuted at the local level, allow the municipality a greater share of the revenue. It's something that with our new law department, new people in place that I expect to see happen in 2016. Uh, in the fall of last year, I spoke and worked with Chief Brian Benton about bringing beat officers back to downtown Joliet. We did so on a trial basis for a few months. I think anybody who spends time downtown like myself saw the results. I know downtown business owners um, were very happy with the new climate that was being fostered in downtown Joliet. I think it's important that we keep that. People need to know that they're safe in downtown Joliet. And look sheets doesn't do it for them. They know it when they see policemen on the streets, policemen out there. Um, and I think it's important with the commitment that Joliet Junior College and the College of St. Francis has made to put their students in downtown Joliet, the city needs to match that commitment to keep them safe. I absolutely ex expect that those positions to become permanent in 2016 and the beat officers will become a permanent fixture in downtown Joliet. Um, recently, a couple days ago at the Land Use Committee, talk about uh, changing the, the dog ordinances in Joliet. It's clear we need to revamp a vicious dog ordinance in Joliet. We've had a number of attacks. Um, right now, it seems that those issues are falling through the cracks between Will County Animal Control, Joliet Township Animal Control, and the Joliet Police. Um, it seems like some of these cases are falling through the cracks. In 2016, you're going to see a new ordinance. I believe the city should hire an enforcement officer, somebody whose job it is, um, not a police officer, but someone whose job it is to enforce the ordinances that we put on the board and to force Joliet residents who are dog owners to be responsible and hold them accountable if they're not for their, for their animals. Um, I think in 2016, I would expect, um, I've talked quite a bit, I actually talked to the city manager this morning about working with our seniors, establishing program, volunteer programs to help our seniors, especially in the wintertime, volunteer snow shoveling programs. We have a number of high schools in Joliet, and we have thousands of high school students that need community service hours. I think in 2016, I would expect to see someone in City Hall responsible for coordinating these service hours and getting these young people to help the seniors in our community. Uh, finally, for 2016, I would like to see the city make a better commitment to St. Joe's Hospital on the west side of Joliet. People may or may not know, St. Joe's is the single biggest employer of Joliet in, inside the city of Joliet. And the medical campus at St. Joe's is second to none. It's a real jewel of our community. Um, St. Joe's has, has talked with my office and with the city about improving the infrastructure and some upgrades around that medical campus. I think it's something we should do. We've spoken about a TIF district, but I think St. Joe's has made a commitment to Joliet. They stayed in Joliet. All the doctors that made a commitment to Joliet, I think, is the mayor. I think the city owes them the same commitment back to do what we can to facilitate their efforts and help that medical campus. So again, thank you uh, for coming out. I know, I, I hope it wasn't too long, but if there's um, any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I'm sure there's at least one. <laughs> yes. Water testing, in light Yes, we routinely do water testing. Um, obviously, what happened in Flint was unacceptable. Um, which one thing I haven't talked about, which you will see in 2016, is the the underwater tunnel that was built under the river. Uh, essentially, the um, the EPA came to Joliet in the 1980s, told us that our water system was antiquated. Uh, when we get excess amount of rains, the wastewater flows into the into the general uh, water sewage. I'm not sure if I'm using the right terminology. In any case, Joliet has bonded that project out. We put 40 million dollars out to build a tunnel under, uh, under the river, build a new 
tr water treatment plant on the east side of Joliet, um, but we do have staff that regularly monitors the water. The only extent the city, or the only influence the city has with the, with the Splain Street project demolition is through uh, the housing authorities responsible for that. Um, we do have a housing authority committee, an oversight committee, that, and the city council, they report to them. Uh, regarding Evergreen Terrace, the oral arguments for the appeal included last week, I would imagine in the next month or so, we'll get a decision from the federal judge. Um, I did present in 2015 several different proposals to the city council on what we're going to do with the property when we're successful. Um, the council didn't adopt any proposal. I think it's still up in the air what's going to happen. Um, and, and not to complicate too much, but um, the federal government, the city of Joliet in 2000, in the middle of the process. Joliet settled that lawsuit with the Department of Justice. But in the, in the settlement, there are a lot of conditions that were put on Joliet that we need to meet once we retain owner, we get ownership of the property. So I anticipate we are going to be successful in the appeal. We will get ownership in 2016. I think part of it will allow us access to the property so we can manage the property. I think when we get in there, we're going to have a better idea from the city's standpoint what's feasible moving forward. Thank you very much. It's great to see everybody. Thank you.